I've been researching DMT for two years, reading everything I could get my hands on and watching all the videos I could find on quite possibly the most powerful psychedelic known to man. I've wanted to experience the DMT breakthrough for a long time, but I never wanted to force it. I always thought to myself, if the stars align and it's meant to happen, it will happen. When our trip to Bali was altered due to COVID-19, we turned our sights toward Mexico. About a month before our departure from the United States, I researched the possibility of a DMT retreat where we would be staying in Tulum, and I came across Bufo Alvarez Sanctuary, a holistic hotel retreat that offered 5-MEO DMT ceremonies. I emailed the owner and asked if he would be willing to take me through a ceremony even though we wouldn't be staying at his hotel. He said it wouldn't be a problem and to contact him when I was ready. I was immediately attracted to the fact that he didn't try to sell me on the experience because like I said, I never wanted to force the issue. We arrived in Tulum on September 14th, 2020. On September 17th, 2020, I was ready. After entering the teepee, before the ceremony could begin, my guide had me recite a quick traditional prayer before the start of my journey. A slow, single, 10-second inhale is all it takes. It seemed easy, but when my guide tried to give me more, I physically couldn't do it. I already felt it. It was like being hit by a train. Even with my eyes closed, I felt everything around me begin to disintegrate. At this point, my knees begin to shake and my soul leaves my body to begin its journey. I traveled into an abyss floating around in dark nothingness.
I had done enough research to know that I would die in this other dimension. I thought I was ready for it, but I was wrong. God kept telling me to let go, but I kept fighting it. I wanted to hold on to a little piece of myself, of my ego. I wanted to hold on to the knowledge and understanding I thought I would gain from this journey. Because I couldn't let go, my energy would explode and I would have to start all over again. This happened several times. I can't tell you how many times I died. At this point, I wanted it to be over. Dying several times was agonizing to my energy and to my soul. I was trying to fight my way back to this dimension, but there was no way I was going to win that battle. Even though my eyes were slightly open, I didn't see anything but the dark abyss. This is the point where I finally surrender. I had nothing left and I couldn't fight anymore. I was ready to give myself completely. This is the time of my final death. When I died, I was no longer in the darkness. I was surrounded by calm, white light. There was no more pain, no suffering or agony. There was only white, peaceful love. And I became part of that white light. Mama, 
this point I was shown something by the white light. It was a shape that's difficult to explain because it doesn't exist in our dimension. The shape represented humanity. At the beginning, the shape would be white. As time went on, the shape would get darker and darker until it imploded, only to start the cycle all over again. I believe this was showing me that humanity begins in a very pure manner, but as time goes on, the destruction humans create within themselves, as well as on the earth, dooms humanity as a whole. Humanity ends. Eventually it begins again, only to relive its impending doom. This happens again and again in a never-ending cycle. I feel like I am part of the white light. I feel like I am part of God, watching the constant crash of humanity from a distance. But from my seat, I feel nothing but calmness and love. The next part of my journey took me into a forest setting. I'd be given a set of futuristic contact lenses that would allow me to choose my own eye color. There was an overlay on the forest that was made up of 10,000 connecting octagons. Each octagon was its own color and every color imaginable was there to choose from. So many more colors than I thought existed. I would turn my eyes to a blue color that I liked. That octagon would turn into 10,000 new octagons with shades of that particular blue. I chose what shade I liked. Boom, 10,000 more octagons popped up with even more specific shades. At first, it was nice to have so many options, but it just kept happening again, 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 again. And it was getting faster and faster and faster. Now the colors were accompanied by designs. There was cat eye, swirled eye, multicolored eye. I couldn't concentrate anymore. I couldn't even see what I was looking at anymore. I was just being rushed with wave after wave of these colors that at first seemed so beautiful but lost all appeal as they began suffocating me. I didn't want it anymore. I began saying cancel, 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 stop, 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 power, hoping that a window would pop up as on a computer that would allow me to exit the program, but it wouldn't stop.
the, the bucket. I felt like I needed to throw up. I thought the journey was over, but I was pulled back into the white light. I feel like God wanted to make sure I got the message. This happened a couple times, where I would begin to come back to this dimension, and I would be pulled back as if God was saying, not yet, you need to look again.
were sweating a lot. <laughs> trying to understand the more I kept oh, just taking it back to everything was folding on itself and just folding on itself and right, again and again and again <laughs> until you understand that you don't understand right as weird as that sounds <coughs> you don't you don't understand you just yeah, you really do realize you're insignificant but so significant in what really matters and that's the white and the white and the colors don't mean anything it's the white and it's how how you love everybody how you love amen is white love Like the light? And all the colors are distractions. All the colors are just, it's what you can't stop. So many, so many. I think that's what, what I got, is there's so many distractions. If you can't stop, they're all around. You can't stop, you have to. <coughs> oh, man. I can't tell you how many times I died in that. Oh. And every time you think that you get it every time you think that you start understanding <coughs> it forces you to realize you don't and every time all that understanding right you think you get I feel like I was going to throw it up I feel like it was just getting sucked out of me but <coughs> it's like a constant thirst for knowledge or understanding It's a color. It's a distraction from what really matters. The light. The love. cycle 
And then you gotta realize it doesn't matter because it's not gonna happen again, and that's a distraction. It's a distraction. Hang tight to watch an interview with my guide and the founder of Bufo Alvarius Sanctuary. Hello, so our first business owner in Tulum, they were uh, wanted to talk to you about. He owns the Bufo Alvarius Sanctuary, um, and uh, it's an excellent spot that we found. Very, very fortunate to find it. Um, now, where are you from? I'm from Finland. I've been 10 years in Mexico, of which five years in Tulum. Tulum. Five years in Tulum. And uh, you've had the sanctuary for how long? Yeah, we've been open now for a little bit more than one year. Okay. Good year? Yeah. It's going well? Going super good. Good, I good. Served about 500 clients this first year. Ufu Alvario. Excellent. Everyone is happy so far. Good. Good. You have beautiful space here. Um, I love how every every cottage, every room is mirrored on the outside. It looks very natural here, but also very futuristic at the same time. It's very beautiful. Um, how many uh, rooms do you have available here? At Thirteen rooms in three levels. Uh, eight comes with the shared bathrooms uh, right here, and five with private bathrooms. With the with both the bathtub. Yeah. Oh, nice. Yeah. nice. Was it difficult to start a business in another country? Mm. Well, it's a different, different country. Yeah, for sure. You know, to deal with the bureaucracy and the corruption to yeah make it happen. So it happens when you're a foreigner in most countries that yeah. are trying to start something new and create it for yourself. It's, uh, I'm sure it's not, not easy most of the time, but worth it though. Yeah, I took the anarchist approach and better as like forgive than for me. Permission, yeah. <laughs> it's a good saying. I've learned, I've learned that a few times. Um, you offer the Bufo ceremony here. Um, 5-MeO-DMT, can you tell us about that? Yeah, that's right. Well, the medicine comes from a tree toad from a Sonoran State. It also lives in Arizona and Colorado. It's called River, Colorado River Toad there. And, uh, yeah, it's extracted as a liquid. It's dried out in the sun and then it's smoked with a glass pipe. And it takes you completely knock out for around 15 20 minutes and then you start coming back you already know little by little remembering who you are and where you're at and yes yes to be at peace and i was uh, very fortunate to be able to have out there before a ceremony uh the other day and it's still two days later still hitting me hard and uh in understanding all of it and the message that I was able to bring back with it. It's a great, amazing experience. Uh, very intense, but very well worth it. And um, I think everybody discovers kind of what they're looking for. If you think there's a general message that people come back with, I know everybody kind of has their own their own thing that, thing that they see and experience while they're gone and out of this world, out of this reality. Yeah, Is it's a, a general travel to inside in your subconscious mind and that's why Everyone reacts a little bit differently. But I've seen girls cry many times, and guys can scream. And, uh, but everyone is super relaxed and at peace in the end. In the end, yes, yes, that's exactly how I felt. Terrifying while you're there. Um, terrifying, um, painful to the soul. You have to you die. You die, you're reborn into a white love. And that's what you bring back. You bring back that whiteness with you. And uh, it was a phenomenal experience for me. Um, you said you've done it yourself several times. Yeah? About ten times. Ten yeah. times. Yeah. Six, six years. 
over those 10 times, is it a different experience each time or are they relatively the same? I still don't remember it when I took the full dose. It's normal, it's like a dream. You don't remember the most part. And, uh, yeah, but otherwise it's a similar kind of experience every time. It's like being God, part of the God, and together with everything. Oneness, what you will, what you feel. Absolutely, oneness with everything. Everything interconnected with love and electricity. <laughs> I mean, no. But um, yeah, again, I can't thank you enough for the experience. Congratulations on, on having this set up and creating your life here and your business. And uh, very, very glad to have met you. Thank you. Thank you, Val. Thank you. Mm -hmm. If you like this video, don't forget to give us a thumbs up and subscribe to see more great travel content.